Look what I've dragged home today. This is a Sony Mega Watchman from 1991, possibly. It's seen better days. Um, it's obviously been sitting outside in the rain. I let it dry in my office all day, so... I think it's okay as far as that goes. But there could be things living in it. Who knows? I mean, I doubt it even works. But I thought, what the hell? I'll drag it home and see what I can do with it. <laughs> Unfortunately, all Sony Watchmen are pretty much obsolete. They can't be used for broadcast over-the-air television anymore. Thanks, Obama! On the back, we have our external power supply. It'll take a DC 12-volt 12 12 input. Um, that would mainly be used in a vehicle. I would have had a cigarette lighter adapter with it. We've got our 120 volt mains. And get this, it runs on batteries. We need to get a load of these batteries. Batteries alone, they're probably original to the unit. Um, they've been in here a very long time. These, my friends, are the first generation Energizer uh, the built-in checker, uh, the built-in, uh, test point. These batteries are probably somewhere around, I'm going to say 18 years old. So I'm pretty certain that they are the original to the unit. Let me plug it in before I waste time trying to restore it. Because I am going to try to restore it if, if it even has the slightest inkling of function left in it. So plug it in and see what happens. Now I'm going to turn it off. Obviously we won't be using that cassette deck until it is thoroughly cleaned because it is disgusting. I don't know if I can get the kit. Oh look at that. Ugh, God. Disgusting. There is no E and disgusting. I'm just pronouncing it that way because because I can. Here we go. Alright. The first function is radio. Sliders are obviously in need of repair. It is set to AM. So we're going to have to put the antenna up. There we go. Now where is the indicator? Oh, there it is. I need a break. Let's do it. There are, of course, other ways to address the right. population boom. China addressed its rising numbers with the controversial one chip. I got to get some contact cleaner. I went through a few times. Well, it works surprisingly well. Now we're going to test the function that you all came here to see. I don't know what sleep is. Oh, you know what? I bet sleep actually turns the tube off so you can hear the audio. Willing to bet. Oh, the cassette player does not offer recording functionality. It just offers play, stop, forward, reverse, and pause. Okay. We'll see if that even does anything, huh? Let's put it on tape and press the play button. And see if it rotates. It works. Unbelievable. It actually works. Okay, I don't have any tapes to put in there right now. I'm going to clean it first, and then we're going to try it out. TV, here we go. Oh my god, it works. Well, kind of. Nothing. Nothing that I can discern. Let's take it apart. All right, now we're going to dismantle the Mega Watchman. 
Okay, I'm going to lay a towel down to protect its soft and fragile surfaces. And you've got this nice, uh, beautiful uh, microfiber cloth. We're going to use that. And we're going to put it on its front. And we're going to tear it apart. So, alright, and uh, I'm going to put it right aside for now. Okay, um, now looking inside, basically, basically what I'm looking at is the uh, circuitry for the tuner and the cassette deck. And Oh, right here we have the flyback transformer. It's uh, right there on top. See, uh, I'm going to have to remove the antenna so that I can free up the antenna lead. Like that. Alright. I'm going to take the antenna mast and the connector that it attaches to completely off. I have a production date, I think. Get ready for it once I uh, see it. But it looks like I'm cleaning the top cover is going to be a piece of cake. Because there's no electronics in it, so I can just basically run it in the sink, spray it with some cleaner. It's disgusting. Look at that. It doesn't deserve that kind of treatment. Come on. This is a Sony Mega Watch, man. It deserves better. Got all this black stuff on me. I don't know what that is yet. I'll figure that out in a minute. Probably some kind of a um, ink or it could be. I don't know what it is. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can't get the back cover off. We don't really need to at this point, but it could be fun, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There's the back cover. And there are the warnings saying, don't touch anything, you will die. And I can just unplug this. Take a look inside there. I'll, I'll pull the camera off the tripod so you can see what I, what I see. Look at how simple it is. Look at this. So we've got one board for the AM FM receiver and the TV tuner and the cassette player and the flyback, which is all the analog circuitry. We've got this tiny little CRT. That's the cutest little CRT I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> And two pretty good sized 3 watt speakers. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, I really don't have to disassemble it much more. I did want to pull the dent out of the uh, speaker grill though, so I may pull one of the speakers off. Here's the back cover, and we've got our uh, AC to DC converter. We've got what appears to be... Yeah, that's uh, the input. Uh, probably some kind of a fusible link in there somewhere and and that feeds the transformer and also controls the power source from battery to 12 volt in and uh, AC in so okay this is really the guts of it just one board one board one cabinet anyway uh, 
CRT can be removed by pulling off that uh, clip. Look at the tiny little anode. Oh. <laughs> anode aperture. Oh, look at how cute. I bet it packs a little punch. It'll probably blow up a squirrel. But not a human. It would hurt. It would probably hurt for about a second. Um, but I'm sure, yeah, it's not as powerful as it looks. Okay, uh, the, we have here is the uh, the antenna input. I'd like to find an adapter for that. Um, but what I really want to do is pull the cassette deck off and clean it with a paintbrush. Believe it or not, the slider controls are in good shape. Um, they didn't crackle much once I moved them a few times. They kind of they're kind of self cleaning in that way. And, in fact, I can clean them externally, which is really nice. Just take a cotton swab and, and clean them up. Uh, what we have here is the, uh, this is where, oh, that was grease. Okay. This is our tuner. Um, this is actually what uh, couples the tuning knob on the top cover to the actual tuner. And, uh, let's see, there must be a separate tuner for TV, but I don't see one. Um, it looks like it uses one, amazingly, this is the only tuner that it has. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's actually really cool. Uh, one tuner for both AM and FM, I, and TV, and UHF. Just, uh, good engineering right there. We can clean the cassette deck pretty easily. I'm going to start by removing that. Um, I do have an air compressor, but I'm not planning on using it on this. I'm going to just pull off the two. Oh, oh I, can, I can do this. For a second, it looked like I was going to have to uh, desolder a couple of uh, grounding leads, but it doesn't seem to be the case. We'll even take a look at the belt, see what kind of condition they're in, and if they'll actually successfully pull a tape through or not. I don't see why they wouldn't. Uh, this is a pretty modular design. I can just unplug the head and the motor is connected from underneath, so I can pull that off. Got to be careful though, um, you could still touch the wrong wrong thing and zap yourself. This is a television set regardless of its size and it does contain in all seriousness uh, potentially I can't even say it with a straight face. Lethal voltages but no no they really do contain high voltage um, don't let the size deceive you. But this is pretty disgusting. Um, I'm going to just brush it down with a uh, with a paintbrush in the sink but I gotta remove my dishes first. All right. Okay, so here we are at the sink. I'm going to just lightly brush away the dust from within the mechanism. We're not going to harm anything, I'm sure, with the paintbrush. That's why I use the paintbrush for light cleaning, because it really is probably one of the safest. Um, you can still pick off a small part with a paintbrush if you really... Uh, I really wanted to, but <laughs> we're going to also clean the uh, heads and tape path afterwards. There's a little bit of grease still left in there from when it was assembled, which we will get to in a minute. Uh, it's just componentry. Anyway, so that's as clean as I'm going to get it, and that's about 100% better than it was. Um,
bad. In fact, it had been exposed to moisture for so long that there was mold growing underneath the um, fat deck cover. Uh, when I first picked it up, I noticed there was like a green film right inside there, and I don't like that. So we're getting ready to liberate the uh, electronics from the chassis best as we can, or from the from the housing. Um, so I think I freed up the board. Not quite. There must be one or two screws I missed. Oh, of course there are. Let's take those out. All right. Now there's one that's hidden right between there. See, everything on this board is through mount. So what they would have done is somebody would have placed the components, one or more people, in a line. And it would have gone through a wave soldering machine where the solder is actually, um, it kind of uh, touches the bottom of the board and uh, solders everything in place. I've never seen a wave soldering machine in, in action, but uh, surprisingly, I haven't. Okay. Now, what am I stuck on? Ah, speaker connector. You know, I should have seen this, but I didn't. I didn't. The speaker connector. Oh wait, no, there it is. There it is. It's just kind of raveled in there. At first, I thought it was um, it was directly soldered. See, earlier, um, in earlier machines. They didn't use those connectors. Everything was soldered in place. And uh, that made things harder to work on. Hard as hell, in fact. Um, now, I'm going to grab this by the yoke. I've never handled such a small CRT in my life. I didn't disconnect the anode aperture. I should. I didn't. i to make sure everything is going to be to come out. It's my luck that that would be a problem, you know. Okay. The only thing connecting this board to this duff is the anode aperture, but we're going to pick these parts up like that, which is totally unsafe and not should be ever done by anybody. Uh, so. Alright, now there was a dent right here. We're going to try to work that dent out. See, see, back in this time, in this day and age, or, um, sorry, back in the 90s, they used a lot of uh, metal uh, speaker grill covers in, in home stereos and portable stereos. The problem with the metal ones is that they dented so damn easily. That's pretty much cleaned up. Well, removed. Dent is removed. And we're going to now clean this with degreaser and water and all that happy stuff. Okay, so. Okay, here's a quickie. Um, the aerial antennas that they used to use back then, these were the collapsible type, and they get really stiff and gross, and, you know, there's a way to fix that, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, to clean the antennas, you need a couple of things. 
what we're going to do is we're going to first clean it with rubbing alcohol. And uh, that's going to remove any uh, old grease, grime, and dust and happiness. I don't know why I said happiness, but it'll remove it. All right, so we're going to clean the base first. This has got a nice black antenna base, or um, the first link is nice and black. So I'm going to kind of go like that. And you can see it's pretty dirty. Not that bad, though. Okay, there we go. All right. The next thing we need to do is lubricate it. Now, they actually sell antenna lubrication packets. I've never used them. Um, but they're really designed for uh, electro electric antennas and cars. But you can just take regular old oil and put it on a rag. And we're going to uh, just rub the antenna over with oil, just like so. so this is a very lightweight motor oil uh, used for electric motors. Also, we're going to make sure, by the way, that there aren't any bent links. This one is a little, it's a little bent, but you don't want to go crazy straighten them out because um, you're not gonna. <laughs> if you're lucky, it won't snap. That's the hard reality of it all. It's a little better. Actually, a lot better. We're going to do it again. Get some uh, nice, clean, fresh oil. And do it again. You really want to work that oil into the antenna body. That's better. Oh, that's better. It's more than likely that this probably sat on someone's kitchen counter for many years. I bet you that's what happened. And that's why the batteries are so damn old. They probably bought it, put a set of batteries in it, they ran down in five minutes. That's about as long as they last, by the way. Like five freaking minutes. And then they took them out. Or didn't take them out, they just left them in there. And through the graces of God, they didn't leak. Because that's usually what happens. All right. We're going to start reassembling all uh, Megavision there, and um, just got to do this uh, very gently and delicately because we're dealing with some, you know, sensitive electronics and all that. So anyway, um, here we go. We're going to start by dropping in the CRT, the speakers, and the main board. Now I have to delicately carry these items uh, because they're so precariously disassembled and in a vulnerable state. So, I don't want to screw that up. Um, so here we have the CRT. I'm going to just uh, loop this around. Oh yeah, that's upside down. Hold on. I do want to clean off the surface of the CRT. Here's one thing I noticed. Um, there is no implosion band on the CRT. I kind of wonder why that is. It might be constructed differently. It looks to be made from a single piece of glass. It's kind of hard to tell, though. Um, in that case, it's just a blown piece of glass. And uh, may not need to be protected from implosions because there's not much vacuum. Uh, not as much vacuum, I should say, uh, in that as it would be in the standard okay. larger screen. So we're going to clean the face of the picture tube, some Windex and a microfiber cloth. Not that it'll ever really matter, <laughs> but I like to be thorough. Thorough, thorough, thorough. Okay. This is going to go in like so.
reassembly, it's important that you get the dial indicator uh, running through that greased track. And that's really the one, um, the one major requirement in getting everything uh, properly assembled.
and the Mega Watchman is back together with zero leftover parts. Nothing surprising found. Everything looks good inside. Um, every connection, every little nut, bolt, cranny. Contact has been cleaned and it looks like brand new. Of course, I cheated a little bit. I used some uh, Mother's protectant. So this is actually for automotive interiors. It's good stuff. I use it on my car. Kind of have to polish up some of the... Got a little surprise in store for you guys. I don't know what to expect, so I could be as surprised as you are. First, we're going to put it on the radio. Switch it to FM. Put the aerial. In Britain, in Britain, they call these aerials for some reason. Well, maybe because they're, you know, in the air. I might do it. A part of the, this this media backlash. The right part. I think what surprises me the most I think what surprises me the most about this is how well it sounds. Let's test the tape player. Let's test the tape player, see how that goes. Uh, I've got some Stephen King. Put one of those in. I haven't actually tested the tape player. I was afraid to use it uh, because it was so dirty when I, when, I, when I got it. So, Unfortunately, when I bought this set of Stephen King, The Talisman, I didn't realize that it was cassettes number 10 through 18, and I am missing about oh, all of them. So here we go, side A, play. against the workers of iniquity. Oh. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass. Everything works. For they shall soon be cut down like... Now the uh, grand event, does the TV still work? Um, here we go. The TV still works. As well as it did before. The VHF. We worked on the Can we say this in Yeah, I think they were too now. We are. So the Hillary Clinton will say that this information didn't become classified until after after the fact, like with the Hillary. When she talked about it, it wasn't well surprised, it may have became that. The thing is, I want to say what the Democratic opponents say about this, but so far... So, it works pretty damn well. Pretty damn well. Um, I've got to say, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, other than the fact that it can't receive analog broadcast anymore, sadly. Um, okay, now the surprise I have for you well, let's just say it shocked the hell out of me more than uh, more than you'd think. Um, but the surprise I have for you guys is that I'm really a famous ag. No, um, <laughs> yeah, not a famous actor. No, um, where's that towel? Oh, there it is. I'm going to show you what's been powering this sucker throughout my demonstration. You're going to be blown away. Be prepared, because, well, you probably already figured it out, but in case you haven't. I have been powering this unit off of these uh, 1990s Energizer D-cell batteries. The ones, the very ones that came with it when I got it. Now, are you shocked? That's right, folks. It's been running on antique D-cell batteries, um, including the television, which uses the most power out of everything—more power than, more power than anything else. 
it's been running off of the original D cell batteries. Um, so there you go. I'm going to tighten up the antenna mask just a little bit. It's kind of loose. Um, give it a nice little tweak on that screw right there. There we go. It's good and tight. Maybe a little tight. Better than it was. And that concludes our broadcast day. Just kidding. Uh, actually, there's one thing I wanted to check. What I want to do is I want to plug in one of these cables, and I want to see if the in, if the tuner is overridden. And uh, here we go. No, it's not. That's what I was afraid of. What I wanted to do Yeah, it just acts as an antenna. That's all it does. I was hoping it would be a video input of some form, and that's going to be my next project with this. I want to come up with a video input that can take over for the old analog tuner so I can actually plug something into this and use it. I think that'd be really cool. So, now that concludes our broadcast.